So we're going to demonstrate uh, what's termed a half Dix Hall Pike. So let's take a look at how the test is done in a normal subject. Next test we're going to review is a half Dix Hall Pike. This is a test for posterior canal cupulolithiasis, and we'll be demonstrating it for her left. The basis for doing a half Dix Hall Pike for cupulolithiasis is that the cupula for the posterior canal sits at about a 30 degree angle off gravity. So when we do a Dix Hall Pike for cupulolithiasis, you don't want to do a full Dix Hall Pike because that puts the cupula close to parallel with gravity and the weighted debris won't tend to bend the cupula. But if we back that off a bit and do a half Dix Hall Pike, now the cupula is perpendicular to gravity and you'll get your maximal displacement of your cupula. Okay. So hand placement still high on the skull. Turn the head 45 degrees to the left. For testing for cupulolithiasis, loading's not important, so it's not necessary. Hold on to my forearm again, Gretchen. And we're gonna lie flat on your back on a count of three. One, two, three, back, and we just stop short halfway. So you wanna let her head drop back about 60 degrees. Eyes right on the tip of my nose. Forehead should be above the chin for a half Dix Hall Pike test. And so her head should be elevated from the table approximately 30 degrees. And you're observing for nystagmus.